In my last video, I talked about the Quest, the standalone VR headset made by virtual reality pioneer Oculus that I believe can seriously revolutionize this industry. A small but very dedicated community sprung up almost overnight around this device. There was a lot of hype, a lot of excitement, and owners of the Quest are, by and large, very satisfied with their purchase. And of course, Oculus had to f*** it all up. All right, maybe to say that they f***ed everything up is too strong, but they are definitely upsetting the community in the last couple of days. Here's what's going on. For those who don't know, the Oculus Quest store is taking on an Apple-like approach to curating the content that goes on there. And I understand that. VR is a niche kind of segment, and by and large, it's not the average consumer that's most interested in virtual reality. It's people who are into technology, people who like to tinker with their devices, people who are nerds, basically. The rationale goes, it seems, that they want this thing, the Oculus Quest, to be the most polished end user experience available in VR. And for that, they must make sure that the apps, the games that go up for sale on the Oculus Quest store meet a certain threshold of quality. It's perfectly understandable, but it does create some very, very disappointing situations. The VR platformer to the top, which seems very interesting, it's basically a Spider-Man simulator of sorts. You just basically climb things and you're jumping around and it's it, it looks like a lot of fun. It's out on PC VR, it's out on PS VR. The developer was porting it to the Quest, but it was rejected by Oculus. Which is a real bummer because now I want to play this game and I'm going to have to give my money to Sony instead. I'm gonna have to play it on this thing, which I thought I wasn't going to even plug into my PlayStation anymore. I thought I was done with PSVR. I guess not. Then the same thing happened again with Vinyl Reality, which is a virtual DJ kind of solution. It's a very interesting application of VR technology, one that I hadn't thought of at all. And again, it was rejected by Oculus. And according to the developer who posted a thread on the Oculus Quest subreddit, no justification was actually given as to why they rejected their app in the store. Then we had the situation with Virtual Desktop, which is a remote access VR application that basically simulates your computer inside virtual reality. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, for one, you can access your computer remotely within virtual reality, which is kind of cool. But most importantly, it allows you to play computer VR games on the Oculus via streaming. If you're in the same network and your internet speed is fast enough, you can play, say, Steam VR games on this thing, which makes it way more interesting to consumers, but perhaps not so interesting to Oculus, which would rather you buy games available for the Oculus as opposed to buying Steam VR games and then playing them in the Oculus through this jerry rig kind of solution. Because of that, Oculus pressured the developers of Virtual Desktop to remove that ability. So, so people who buy Virtual Desktop, who, people who bought Virtual Desktop for that reason alone, and I happen to know at least one of those people. We basically spent our money for nothing. You know, it, it's weird. This shows, yet again, how fast the climate in a community can change. Following the launch, even just before the launch of the Quest and following the launch, people on that subreddit were so excited, so optimistic. I was one of them. This is a place where I've been posting consistently since the Quest came out, since I got my Quest. I'm very excited about this technology, very, very excited about this product and its future. So I'm a big supporter and I was right there with people who were posting on the subreddit, very excited about what this means for virtual reality. This is the first time, like the, the Quest represents the first time this technology is presented to the public public in a very easy to use and consumer friendly solution and then it probably why it makes it all the more weird that Oculus is taking these anti-consumer routes and again I fully understand the rationale here Oculus has an uphill battle on their hands the quest isn't exactly what you'd say an impulse buy the cheapest available option is $400 US and it is unproven technology they don't have triple A quality titles just yet. It's still, a lot of the games are kind of gimmicky or pretty short or can't even be called games. They're more like VR experiences like uh, Vader Immortal, which I bought and then even a huge Star Wars fan was a little underwhelmed by. It's exciting, yes, to be living within the Star Wars universe and performing those actions in VR, but the game is over in like 30 minutes. So I, again, I, I would call that more a VR experience 
than a VR game. So I understand why it's very important to Oculus to present the best possible experiences to consumers to convert people into VR gaming. I, I get it. it the, the walled garden approach that Apple has caught so much flack for, it does have some benefits. Of course, we don't want another video game crash of 83 to happen with VR. That'd be the absolute worst thing possible that could happen to virtual reality at this point. For those who are too young to know, between 83 and 85, there was this worldwide crash of the video games industry and some people attributed, at least in some part, to the fact that so many companies were rushing to video games. They were putting out so many games and not meeting the most minute criteria of quality. It was pretty much a gold rush. And because of that, video games as a whole suffered. So I understand why Oculus would want the games that are put on this thing to meet a certain level of quality. I get it. And I know it's not just because they care about consumer experience. I know it's because they want money. But the problem is that Oculus perhaps is not yet in a position to be turning away developers who are making games for a system that doesn't have that many games just yet. And yes, the Oculus Quest just came out and it was a very strong launch with over 40 titles. I can't think of a single video game console that came out with 40 games right out of the gate. But the community wants more content and you're going to need more content to convert the people who are on the fence about VR. So it's very disappointing to see this happening. Again, understandable, but one wonders if they're being perhaps a little too overzealous about the games that they're rejecting on the store. What is, how does that make developers feel? Developers who are thinking of putting in the time to port their games over to the Quest. All of that time, all of those hours that they have to pay out of pocket, that could all be wasted if Oculus decides that their games are not up to snuff. And it'd be great if Oculus just came out and said, this is why your game wasn't approved in the store, but that's not what's going on. What the developers are reporting is that there's not a lot of transparency. If they were at least told why certain games aren't making the cut, that'd be a much better situation, but they're just not being transparent about it. So right now, the VR community is stuck in this place of cognitive dissonance where we are both very thankful for the pioneering efforts that Oculus has put forth, but at the same time, we're wondering if they could be undermining their own very great product by perhaps being a little bit too Apple-y about the apps they allow on this thing. It's like I said, it's it's weird. Like the, the climate in the community is night and day. Like people are so excited in the following weeks after the Quest was launched. And right now, if you go on the subreddit, it's people are just really negative about the future. Uh, of the Quest in VR in general because like it or not the Oculus Quest represents the biggest mainstream push towards VR we've seen yet this technology has been around for what some in in the commercial form uh, some I want to say six to seven years or so and this is the first time you will get regular everyday people to put a VR headset on and perhaps even go out and buy one themselves. This is a game changer, so it's important that it does well. For the future of VR, it's very important that Quest does well. But what do you think about this? Are you on board with Oculus curating their store? Do you believe that they have, they have the device's best interest in mind when they're trying to prevent crapware to making its way into their store? Or do you think they're shooting themselves on the foot with this? Let me know in the comments down below. If you're new here, as always, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, that helps so much, especially for small channels, like is the case with mine. Follow me on social media, both Twitter and Instagram, very active on both. Oh, hey, I almost forgot. 99 Vitas, my indie game based on my Brazilian gaming podcast of the same name, is now available on the Switch, which is my favorite way to play the game. 99 Vitas, which by the way means 99 lives in Portuguese, is a 16-bit inspired street brawler in the style of classic like Captain Commando or Streets of Rage. There are tons of unlockable characters, bonus levels, challenging boss fights, there's an online mode. We put a lot of thought and work into 99 Vitas and I think you will find that it shows. I did my own voice acting and everything. I mean, obviously I'm biased, but the soundtrack on this thing alone is worth the price of admission in my opinion. Just like every other Switch fan out there, we hate the so-called Switch tax, where indie games land on the eShop with a higher price point than their Steam versions. So 99 Vitas is actually cheaper on the Switch than on Steam right now. Only $10. And hey, don't just take my word for it. There's a demo for you to try it free. So go to the eShop right now and download 99 Vitas. And that's all the time I have for today. I'm Izzy and I'm done.